A good restaurant serves its customers. A great restaurant delights its guests. San Almo Steakhouse is truly a great restaurant. There is no other place like it on earth. We are all stewards of this steak joint that opened up as a small, simple tavern in 1902. But it's the career servers, the professionals, the men and women wearing black bow ties, which makes St. Elmo so special to thousands of guests each year. Early in one's career at St. Elmo, it feels like family almost immediately. After dedicating 20, 25, or even 40 years here, it certainly is family. So to all of you that are St. Elmo stewards, and to all of you who've been performing selfless acts of hospitality greatness for 20 years or more, on behalf of my father, Steve Hughes, we thank you. My name is Ricardo. I work here for 26 years. Steve Allen, I've been here 26 years coming November. Rick Jones, 26 years. Kirk DeCamp, uh, 26 years in July. David Hostetter, um, would be 28 years if I hadn't left for about four. My name's Dave Baird, I've uh, been here for 25 years this October. <coughs> William Bowling, 28 years. Will Shipley, 25 years. Chuck Saipo, I'm the young one, I've been here 19 and a half years. Bill Chai, 28 years. I'm Kerry Walker, and I've been here 29 years. Lorenzo, he turned 76, and 39 years at Puerto Rico. But when you got people standing outside that aren't even coming in the restaurant, standing in front of our sign taking pictures of it, that are tourists, mm -hmm. I mean, that's special right there. We are Indianapolis, and we're, we're an institution. I mean, in more ways than one, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's great. And we've all been institutionalized. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> institutionalized. Or should be an institution. <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice. When you say tuxedo on, you, you represent an animal. It's right. like, hey, be, you know, it's, uh, Make the best you can. The best oh, way, yeah. you know, if you were here, I think we should be nice here and outside too. Oh yeah, because people recognize you like this. When this restaurant first opened, it was an industrial part of town, so it wasn't a great part of town. So the restaurant kind of grew into what it is today. It, it was more of a New York style man's restaurant, cigar smoking, blue collar that white collar came to. <laughs> but I think when we all first started, there was only men working here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's definitely changed. Uh, it's grown considerably um, from about three dining rooms to up to eight or nine now. Everyone got paid in cash. There wasn't any such thing as a check. Uh, you got a manila envelope. <laughs> cash every night, and the, the thing was we were getting out of here at one, two o'clock in the morning, which uh, was a, long, a lot longer than we get out today, which is a nice thing. Everything was written down and you had to figure the six or seven percent tax, tax in your out, head. Yeah. And if you and forgot to write down something right. expensive, you lost it. <laughs> if yeah, you forgot a hundred dollar bottle of wine, you lose it. You bought night. it that you night. You bought it that night. I loved when you stand behind three guys in the bar and get up there and call your drinks and <laughs> and your food would be ready. Yeah. <laughs> Calling our drinks was a fun thing. We used to we, you better know what you're getting, you better have it organized. And your you have to better be you together. Have the Great uses better be together. They, they would line the glasses up and we had to top them ourselves. And I'm sure Dave can remember when he was bartend. You had to basically interpret what Lorenzo came up in order because they, back in the old days, it was a call bar. They went up and called and then they paid for their drinks. And Lorenzo would come up and go, I need a fettuccine. <laughs> and that meant, that meant Lynn finished scotch. Open once, yeah. <laughs> open once, French liquor. Open once, yeah. open once. <laughs> French liquor was... Uh, Frangelico. Frangelico. <laughs> I mean, it's it's called speaking Lorenzo Ease. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The thing is, you know, we shine in Gelgan. It's Gelgan's right in the corner. We shine, tell you the way I don't know what the process of was. It's boom, boom. In Gelgan, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> A different language. Uh, but it's funny how you get used to it. <laughs> He would kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. My favorite one about Lorenzo is. Uh, <clears throat> It was, our, it, Erickson was behind the bar, and I don't know, it, it was busy. I don't know if it was a Final Four or what, but Erickson starts talking to one of the other bartenders instead of putting out the drinks in the well, and Lorenzo pulls out a $20, calls Erickson over and says, Here, that's for drinks afterwards. Right now it's showtime. <laughs> I remember this one guy I waited on, uh, I won't mention his name, but he was a uh, pretty hard ass, and uh, he would get on my nerves. Quite often, and uh, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Face I tell the guy point blank, I tell you, why don't you sit down? Why don't you let me sit down and be so you wear the bow tie? And uh, <laughs> it's been a regular customer ever since then. Dan Stuber told the guy one time that the guy said, you know, my service was horrible. That's why I didn't tip you. And Dan said, no, it wasn't. You're just a cheap mother. <laughs> Those business much better. In serving better. In serving better. It's better. It's better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. It is. It's definitely evolved over the years. Yes. Yeah. When Dan was manager here, um, he had sort of taken off some time and he actually followed uh, the Rolling Stones around on tour. About that. And the way he would get in is he would always carry a box with like St. Elmo and had shrimp cocktails and he'd act like he's delivering them to the back. <laughs> so he'd be able to win and then once they saw him, they were like, oh, come on in, Dan. Yeah. Um, and so when they <laughs> had the tour stage. here, I helped Dan do that, deliver them. And so we got in free and then nice. we got to go up into the center console area where all the soundboards were and watch the, the, the concert up there. And then uh, Hootie and the Blowfish was the other group. And they came up after the concert and were standing up there, it was sort of like a little VIP. And then we got to go backstage after, all because Dan was delivering shrimp cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started here, I, I was working Dan that too. I used to come in like 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon and work till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I did that for a long, for a long time. I had a couple of guys that kept me kept me on my feet. It was Jay and uh, Willie. I couldn't see myself work anywhere else. And anymore since I've been here so long, if I work somewhere else, I have short temper, so I probably, if there's somebody else, I probably would tell them where to go. <laughs> 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 so I don't like working here. But I think my favorite story is uh, when, after Gene Katie had retired, uh, he'd, he'd been coming in here over the years, him and his wife. During the uh, Nike camp, I got to wait on Coach K, Lute Olson, uh, Gene Cady, uh, a couple of former Duke players and the Nike rep. And they were the only ones in the dining room. They were telling the most unbelievable stories about their first wins, their national championships, um, the Olympics, Michael Jordan, all the great stories that, that coaches you would think would be telling. And I was just sitting there um, waiting for them to progress to dinner and Coach K looked over at me and he said, it sounds like you really like these stories. And I, and I really did. And he goes, do you like wine? And I said, yes. <coughs> and he invited me to sit down, have a glass of wine with them while they were eating dinner and wow. listen to the stories. Wow. Uh, to me, that's my most memorable tale. That is cool. Yeah, Mike Tyson, when we did, when uh, <laughs> Jim Bowles and I, Who's they're filming nice? that documentary in the wine, in the, uh, wine cellar. Oh. And so Mike Tyson is vegan. And um, <laughs> so Dave, it comes up with this big elaborate vegan meal with edamame and all this stuff in it and I go up there and learn all the details and go down there and I'm, and I'm like hey, Mr. Tyson you, we've got, here's what we've got for you we know you're vegan so we came up with this bill and he says <laughs> he says I'm vegan because I don't like vegan food all I want all I want is two baked potatoes and margarine yeah. oh that's all I want hey, hey, hey. and uh, After all that. yeah we don't have margarine <laughs> so, <laughs> we got next thing you know we were looking for margarine all over the place oh. and, I think we might have gotten a steak and shake. I recognize the guy from the CEO from the GoDaddy. And I spent pretty good money, spent like $6,000. And the guy at the end of the night, he said, he said, you're my hero. That's all. And when I see the tip, I said, I will live on a hero. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me a $2,100 tip. I said, feel good. <laughs> I felt kind of bad because I've not been in the waiting game for like 15, 16 years. And uh, you guys got all the, the big money after I left before. <laughs> you can, you, you can be, some, but we got better. You got some. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, mean, I had my share of good tips, but it wasn't all. Oh. We got a better manager. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Well, thank Ooh, you. I appreciate yeah. that. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got a good section there. <laughs> before I started working here, I sold them booze every, and walked in every week, and you know, gave my spiel, and then asked if they had a job. And every week, and, and finally one one day, Carrie called me up and asked me if I um, had a tux, and I lied and said yes. And he said, "Well, we'll be here at four, And I went out and bought a tux and came in. What kind of tux? Did I? I bought a black suit <laughs> because because I knew I I, I knew I knew other people. I met Jerry Treesh at the court <laughs> one night drunk, and he said, "Yeah, tell Jeff you know me. He's going there." And Jeff's like, "Yeah, we'll call you next week." And I kind of closed him. Said, but I got free tonight and Wednesday. What works best for you? 
And he said, we'll be here tonight. I go, what do I wear? He goes, wear what Jerry wears. I had no clue. <laughs> and I heard tuxedo. So I called and got my credit card limit raised, and I went over to Top Hat and bought a brand new tux. <laughs> Cumberbund and ruffled shirt. Everything. Yeah. God, these guys made fun of me when I walked back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask a question. Why do yeah. you got the word here? What? Why you got the word here? Why do I like to work here? Yeah. Why? Yes. It's a great place to work. Oh, money. Thank you. Thank you. Money. <laughs> money. <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> it's great money. I mean, this is the the pinnacle. This is the well, best yeah, restaurant the in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the state. Our bus boys make more than a lot of waiters in the city. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. I think I think all of us are just privileged to work here because it's such an iconic restaurant. There's no other place like it. There's only one St. Elmo's. So we really are the celebrities of the service industry. <laughs> so we still, okay. For 20 years. I mean, we are. And everybody wondered about the mystique about St. Elmo and how you can hire there and what's it like to work there. It's kind of like one of those things where you, you arrive. Yeah. Uh, kind of yeah, it's the days of waiting sure. tables, but you know, as a manager, I still feel the same sense of pride because I couldn't imagine anywhere else. I couldn't imagine managing another restaurant anywhere in this country. It's exasperating and it's a lot of hard work, but it's also very rewarding. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've all been through this for a long period of time and we're still here. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm very like a family. It is. Yeah. Very friendly. It is. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's great when uh, the owner of the restaurant comes in, knows your name, he knows everyone's names. I right. mean, I, we, sure. we work for the greatest owners of the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not just saying that, just to, He's looking at the but I mean, it's great. I make the best decision to work here, and I'm lucky to be here, and I can see myself working any place else. This is a place to be. Now I'm very proud to be here, because, you know, business is good, the time is perfect for me, so. I make the best decision in my life to be here in San Anmo since 1902. <laughs> <laughs>